Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren and in today's video we'll be talking about the changes to Balance Druids as well as some hopeful changes for Guardian Druids. It looks like Blizzard wants to make Guardian maybe a little bit better of a tank. And they finally replaced a talent that a lot of Druids have panned as just never press it ever, ever, ever. So hopefully this should fix up a little bit of issues that Guardian Druids have had in the past in terms of being the reliable tank that they usually have been depending on expansion. But also balanced Druids, Blizzard wants to kind of, it looks like walk away from a little bit of this burst play style, just a step back and rather give them a little bit more sustain in terms of how the play styles will work out. So I want to cover all these changes in this video and everything that has happened to Druids recently in this video's update. So first things first, let's talk about some of the changes Boomies have gotten recently. So in this update, it seems that Blizzard kind of wants to diminish the value of your burst slightly, but that damage is going to be re-injected back into the sustained base play style of what Boomies have, which has been the bread and butter of Boomies, which are the dots. So let's take a look at the changes that have happened. Celestial Alignment is going to be losing 5 haste, 5% 5 haste from its burst window. So instead of 10% haste during 20 seconds, you get, so instead of 15, you get 10, sorry. Um, then you also have a change to your mastery where the master actually got nerfed. It went from base 11% of nature damage or arcane damage based on the eclipse that you are to 9%. So that's looking like a total of 2% damage decrease, which together with Celestial Alignment being your big burst cooldown and your master doing slightly less damage, it doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, 2% isn't ma major, but if you just were to keep that and that's it, that was the bug that happened or the change that has happened, that would have been an overall nerf to Boomkins. Instead, the damage that's going to go back to Boomy is going to be from your dots. Your Sunfire, for example, is going to have quite a bit of damage increase from it, the actual damage over time component. And then your Moonfire, same thing. Moonfire is actually... Not a spec ability, is it? Moonfire, same thing. So the base damage of these two abilities, like the actual ticks of them, is going to be a little bit higher. Now, when it comes to hitting a train dummy, I noticed at least on the beta, and we're doing some PTR because the beta is currently down, but we'll be able to take majority of the stuff that's happening to the beta and talk about it here on PTR because all the changes are mostly here as well. The changes that happen to Moonfire and Sunfire, when I was hitting chain dummies on the beta, it felt like my Moonfire and Sunfire were on the lower side of damage. Of course, Moonfire and Sunfire also do bring in shooting stars, so that became passive. So your dots generate shooting stars. In a way, you can count this as part of your dot damage if you were to combine Sunfire and Moonfire together. For me, hitting chain dummies here for quite a bit of time, if I can find the right component here, where I had full rotation for a little bit. This is kind of where the damage is going to be looking like on a non fully properly itemized druid, kind of what I was able to do. So, Ancient Flame does quite a bit of damage. We'll ignore this one for now, but normally it'd be Starfire, it'd be Ras just dominating the damage, and your Moonfire and Sunfire will be at the bottom. I mean, they will be together with Shooting Stars, which is what's looking like 8.5% of my damage, and Moonfire and Sunfire were about the same number, but they're a little bit higher. So, your damage over time consists of about 11.8%, so almost like 12%, then about almost 10, uh, we'll round it up, so 12% plus 10, so looking like 22, plus 9, if you were to round up, so 22 plus 9, it's looking like 31% of your damage will be like periodic damage from Moonfire, Sunfire, and Shooting Stars. This, I don't think is a bad thing, this is going to be better for AoE, for Boomies, in terms of AoE damage, I felt like in the beta last time I tried him, you still heavily relied on big cooldowns. Your Incarnation, maybe together with the Night Fae ability where you're just blasting a bunch of damage. It felt like during those big cooldowns, there was no one that could match up your damage. Outside of those big cooldowns, it didn't feel like you had enough sustain. So hopefully extra damage for dots will give you a bit more sustain, especially as you're focusing on either AoE damage, or on single target damage, or on cleave damage. So this is going to be just taking away a little bit of that burst and injecting it back into your dots. A couple of other changes that have happened that are interesting, and I talked to my guildies about it in order to get their opinion. Uh, the Eclipse for Lunar, which is the uh, Arcane Eclipse, Starfire Caster reduced by 50%. That part is the same, but now Starfire will have 20% increased crit chance. So that means only the ability of Starfire during your Eclipse, Lunar Eclipse, 
will be 20% more likely to crit. Originally, it was an uh, area effect damage would be increased by 100 because right now, the Starfire has a component where it will do set amount of arcane damage to an enemy and cleave damage to all enemies within 8 yards. So now with this change, instead of using ra two rats in order to give you a empowered Starfire, instead of giving it more AoE damage, instead now it's more likely to crit. Which by itself isn't a bad change in my opinion. And I talked to my guildies and what it seems that they wanted to make Starfire maybe a little bit better for a single target. Because normally Starfire in terms of a full blown rotation against an enemy, it doesn't end up being the, the highest bit of damage. And Wrath ends up being so much stronger as a filler ability and Wrath just wasn't enough. Or Starfire wasn't enough. So hopefully this extra crit chance might give Starfire a bit more crit opportunity, you know, like... It's like the, I guess it would be close to like what crit chance, like 20% crit, 30% crit. So this gives you extra crit, so you don't need to stack giga amounts of crit for this to be good. But you might have some kind of a break point in crit, maybe like 20%. So when you have 20% crit, you get 20% crit on top of it. You have uh, four in 10 chances uh, of getting a critical strike with your star search, but also or with your Starfire. Sorry, there's so many abilities, Starfire, Star Surge, all that. The way that Star Surge works for this ability, it also increases the crit chance by 4%. So three Star Surges back to back could turn this crit chance to 32. So maybe Boomies might actually play like a 20% chance to crit. So after three Star Surges, they'll have literally 50% chance of critting on an enemy or not. So I do think it'll be very, very interesting to see if that's how that'll end up panning out for the playstyle that Boomies are looking to get in the Shadowlands. But the crit chance should hopefully be better for single target, but it'll still be useful for AoE, since it'll just basically have a higher chance to do double the damage to things around you. Where that AoE damage did go is actually into a talent of Soul of the Forest, because originally Soul of the Forest had that crit component as part of Star Search, but it was weaker. It was only like 15% extra crit instead of 20. So this 20% crit should hopefully make it a little bit better. So the forest got changed where now this is where the AoE damage is going to come from. So when you have your empowered, your lunar uh, eclipse, then your starfire, which is the AoE ability, it's going to have more AoE damage. So so the forest might actually end up being a decent talent for AoE and mythic pluses. And it does seem like Blizzard in this room in particular has been kind of walking away from uh, Chosen of a Loon. Loon originally had the 10% extra crit uh, haste and was so good, lots of boomies went for it. Blizzard decided to do a switch in the BFA, um, I mean Shadowlands beta, where Chosen of a Loon in Karn will give you crit chance, but your baseline Celestial Alignment will give you the haste. So they kind of did the flip on that one, so that you're more incentivized to not always have to take Chosen of a Loon as a 3 minute cooldown. You can play Celestial Alignment together with Star Lord or Celestial Alignment now together with Soul of the Forest. And hopefully Soul of the Forest should add a little bit more consistency. It is going to be a little bit weird not having Star Surges increase the damage of area of effect, but more chances to crit might allow you to build your character in such a way where you'll be more likely critting whenever you press Star Surge or Starfire. So then those crits of Starfire, hopefully amplified with this extra AoE damage to it, will most likely, hopefully, create a more consistent playstyle for boomies in AoE situations. Overall, what I think the best way to kind of tie off the boomie change is Blizzard trying to make it more consistent, less burst reliant. A couple of weird changes here and there with the crit change and the 100% AoE damage getting swapped. But from talking to my guildies that are druid mains, it doesn't seem that bad of a change. It seems that the damage for the most part will stay about the same it's just you'll have a bit more sustained damage. So in the moments where you're doing Mythic Pluses or in the moments where you're doing PvE fights and you have dots but you're kind of messing up your main burst rotation or not doing it like picture perfect, pixel perfect kind of deal, you will still have more damage output because your dots are adding a little bit extra to that consistency. All right, let's talk about Guardian Druids. Guardians didn't really get too anything crazy. First of all, they got a slow from Infected Wounds, where Mangle of Maul causes an infected wound on a target, reducing movement speed by 50%. I would have loved for Druids to maybe get some kind of an AoE slow, like maybe from Thrash. I think it would have been really strong Mythic Pluses to just run up Thrash and be able to run away from the enemy, but I think it would have definitely helped them out in Mythic Pluses, as I don't really feel like a tank with heavy amounts of representation in that regard. 
but having some kind of a base low on Boomy is going to be good. I mean, on Guardian Druid, sorry. But we also do have Ursula Vortex, we have Typhoon, so at least you have some kind of a base low that you could put maybe on a boss that can be kited or add certain really tough adds that can be kited. And when you go into Berserk, you actually have no cooldown on your Mangle, or almost no cooldown on your Mangle, where you can basically spam Mangle a bunch of enemies and kite them around if you wish. So that might have some play style to it. But having a slow, I think, on a tank that generally doesn't have regular slows to use is a nice feature to add back into the game. Second, Lunar Beam has been removed and has been replaced with Toothy Claw. As far as I understand, Lunar Beam is such a bad talent that you basically would just ignore it, just pretend like it doesn't exist and never press it. So instead, Blizzard added Tooth and Claw, which makes Maul as an ability more useful. So this whole row is going to be damage mitigation. So let me explain what Tooth and Claw will do, and then I'll explain how it fits in a row with everything else. So Tooth and Claw, 40, you have a 20% chance on auto attacks to empower your next Maul, stacking up to two times. And it'll be this buff right here with a Tooth and Claw. And for this buff, Empowered Maul deals 40% more damage and reduces the target's damage to you by 15%. So when I hit Maul on an enemy, uh, dealing 50% reduces damage to Dal KT. So it's an interesting ability where it makes it so you get DR from all abilities that enemy does strictly to you, which could be interesting on its own. So this is going to be a buff in the same row where Lunar Beam was, which gave you a heal based on, or uh, gave you arcane damage and a heal over eight seconds, which apparently was super really bad. Um, in the same row as Tooth and Claw, you have Pulverize. You have a standing blow that consumes two stacks of your thrash on the target, dealing a bunch of physical damage. Reduces the damage they deal to you by 20% for 10 seconds, so it has a very similar effect. 20% damage reduction instead of 15. And it's 10 seconds instead of 6. But Pulverize in the 30 second cooldown, whereas Tooth and Claw, you actually can kind of get it to proc regularly. So I'll just be auto attacking the enemy, I just need a little bit of rage in order to, whenever I do get my procs for my maul, I can use them. So I got a maul right here, so I'll use it. And I'll have 6 second buff, and if my auto attacks are lucky enough, I might be able to get these mauls back to back. Here I didn't, but generally it's a decent proc rate. So we got maul back up on the enemy, trying to just maintain our dots. Maul's back up, so we'll hit it. And we're kind of hoping to fish for another maul proc if possible. Maul did, did happen towards the end, so it's almost like we, we almost missed the uh, the global needed for it. Not getting the mauls right now, so as a druid, mm, you get... Uh, I'd say you get a decent uptime. If you get super lucky with your mauls, then you can maintain it almost all the time. As a druid, I think it'll actually be possible to maintain maul in comparison to pulverize. Because in the opener, you'll probably go for berserk to pop all the big cooldowns. you power bark barkskin, and you'll just try to do as much damage as you can in the opener with your mangles, with your thrashes. And you'll try to get a bunch of layers of iron fur to make sure that you have the most defensive going into the fight. And you'll have a mitigation rolling and making sure that the healer doesn't have to worry about you as you're just diving into the enemy. And while you're doing that, you're doing auto attacks, which can store up Tooth and Claw. So after your big burst is gone with Berserk and big cooldown of Bark Skin, which is in a fairly short CD, you'll probably have two stacks of Tooth and Claw. So we'll start with a single Maul and we'll try to see if how, how long can we maintain it. So we got a second stack as right as it's fallen off, we're going to try to reapply it almost immediately. But we're just trying to kind of time it as best as we can. We got it back up, kind of fishing for another proc of Tooth and Claw. We do get it, You're using it immediately. And again, fishing for it right afterwards. So you can see that it's up pretty regularly, not 100%. I'd say more like 60% of the time. So for my testing, hitting a train dummy and trying to see how well I can maintain this buff, it has a bit of a variance to it because there's only 20% chance on auto attacks to either get the buff or not get the buff. So there can be moments of dry spell where you're just not getting it. And there can be moments where you're just getting it back to back and sometimes even refreshing the stacks. And it's kind of crazy. So yeah, you can kind of see like it, it it's there intermittently. Is there as long as you're auto attacking something. And it does provide 50% DR. Comparison to Pulverize, which is 30 seconds, 20% DR for 10 seconds. Uh, or Renatair, which at most can be 6% constant diminishing uh, DR and you doing 6% more damage to the enemy. Tooth and Claw, the, ma the maul damage does not seem like it's going to be huge. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Here we go. Like, maul, it's, it's doing stuff. 
But then again, this is where I wasn't really prioritizing Thrash or any of the other abilities, but Maul can sometimes do stuff. He can sometimes crit, you know, it's your melee and Moonfire and whatever else probably gonna do more damage. But it finally makes Maul as an ability at least a little bit better. It makes it a little bit worth something because normally you would never press Maul ever as a Guardian. So hopefully this change to talents will at least make Tooth and Claw somewhat useful. Where it can be useful is against enemies that are not all physical damage, like their casters. And maybe they'll be doing some spell that will just do loads of damage to you. Maybe it's a spell that would usually just obliterate tanks and without no Zot Trinket, you're gonna be trying to find tanks that can survive mechanics. So to survive mechanic, you can drop down survival instincts, 50% damage reduction, 20% on top of it with Bark Skin, and now 15% DR with Tooth and Claw, it can make you almost indestructible to like a big magic spell attack. So as a Guardian Druid, you might be able to overlap all these diminish, uh, all these DRs, all these damage reduction elements together in order to survive a really powerful hit. So hopefully Tooth and Claw will end up being somewhat useful. As you can see, it's mostly on single target purposes. I think it might be decent and at least a solid option on boss fights. But again, we'll just have to wait and see what the Guardian Druid mains and Guardian Dru Druid tanks say about it. And if we'll see if anybody will actually use it. But I think it might be a better choice than Lunar Beam was, because Lunar Beam was taken by literally nobody, and where everybody would run Ren and Terror in all types of content where Pulverize wasn't worth it. Hopefully this will be like at least a Pulverize that's up a lot more often, and in some cases can actually be solid when it comes to taking damage from bosses and trying to reduce the damage and being a little bit more uh, reliable as a tank, hopefully. Another thing that we have had changed to Druids, is going to be a Ursul's, uh, Ursul's Fury Remembered Legendary Effect. Where we actually cannot test it right now in the beta since beta is down. The legendary now grants an absorption shield equal to the damage dealt by Thrash. So normally that legendary, in bear form, Thrash has a 50% chance to trigger an additional Thrash. So you Thrash while you Thrash. But now Thrash grants you an absorb shield for 10% of 100% uh, of the damage that it deals. So that could be actually a nice legendary together with the changes that druids have gotten with thrash giving you a little bit extra shield of course it'll be really strong in mythic pluses because for every single enemy hit by thrash it'll give you a pretty big absorb so hopefully it'll make guardian druids maybe a little bit more consistent when it comes to taking a variety of damage this is also an absorb so this as a druid you have to build up rage first so you kind of have to get all the enemies together first thing you're doing is thrashing enemies so that thrash at least will give you a little bit of an absorb shield uh, as you're getting into the fight before you can get yourself a full iron for rolling and now you have some actual mitigation going for you so this could be actually maybe really good for druids going into the next expansion so far i haven't seen a lot of guardian druids really say that they're really excited or they really want to and i haven't really seen a lot of players talking about oh have you seen guardian druid they're looking busted good it's usually prop paladins and blood dks and maybe even monks and maybe demon hunters that i've seen there's not a lot of prop warriors that i've been able to play with or guardian druids for that matter i doubt that they're awful and i doubt the one the, they're impossible to do you know like your aotc stuff with but when it comes to like competitive really high-end mythic plus end game content i do hope that druids guardian druids in particular are at least somewhat competitive and can stand their own at least feel reliable to a certain extent but yeah, that's going to be all the changes that happened to Guardian Druids recently. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. This was all the updates that have happened to Druids in particular recently. Let me know what you think about the newest Balance Druid changes as well as the Guardian Druid changes. I'm really hoping this gives Guardians maybe a little bit of an edge or at least a competitive uh, stance within the mythic pluses within raiding and hopefully makes them just a little bit better as a tank option overall going into the next expansion thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see all of you in another video